The 6.5 is on the road in Las Vegas, Dell Tech World 2024. Dan, this is incredible. It's the 40th anniversary of Dell Technologies, and rumor has it you and I met at uh, this event 10 years ago. How about that? Yeah, it is our 10-year anniversary, and I think it's really important that we call that out in every video that we do here over the next <laughs> exactly. couple of days of coverage. But uh, yeah, it's, a, it's an exciting event, Pat. I walked into my room here at, at the Palazzo where the event is taking place, looked outside, and the sphere was glowing with Dell Technologies. And of course, you're seeing PCs, you're seeing data and infrastructure, um, and we're seeing this massive pivot. And I mean, what a run that Dell Technologies has been on uh, with this AI journey that's proliferating so quickly. Yeah, it's incredible. And what I've really appreciated about the announcements is, first of all, they've been comprehensive, right? All the way from client to private cloud and everything in between. But as importantly as we've seen in Dan, and our companies cover this, is the importance of services. Right, services not only getting the customers ready to, to even understand what direction they should go, but also uh, hardware delivery, uh, managing the systems once uh, they get in there all the way through the, that life cycle. And I couldn't imagine a better person to have on this show than Alex. Great to see you. Good to see you, Pat. Good to see you, Dan. Welcome to Vegas. Welcome to the Dell Technologies Award. It's great to be here with both of you. Thank you. Yeah, it's great to have you here, Alex. I mean, look, services are going to be incredibly important over the next few years. We all know that companies are doing everything from trying to proof a concept, every idea they have, to obviously trying to manage these complex technological environments that they've created. AI is like this new inflection, it's like a new wave, and I kind of laugh, it's like, if you were really successful up to this wave, there's no guarantee of success going forward. And by the way, if you maybe didn't have that perfect frictionless experience, AI could be the game changer for you. So in your world, in the Dell AI, and let's just say Dell as a whole, in the whole services world, kind of how is all this transition pivoting? How's the story evolving for you in the business you're leading? Yeah, that's a great question, Dan. So if you, if you look at services at, at Dell, we have really been transforming. It used to be really all about the physical assets we have, right? We serve customers in 170 countries. And so to reach the 170 countries, you speak a lot of different languages, you have a lot of different parts depots. So you have a lot of physical infrastructure, but over the last 10 years, it has really transformed into a technology services. Uh, you look at the software right. we build, you took all the AI that we injected into the business. I'll get to Jen and I in a second, but all the AI that we have in there, and it's a massive transformation of the business. Uh, support Assist is a sort of signature product that we have in, in our pro support suite. And that's the intelligence behind all the support services that we execute. And that intelligence really does a proactive predictive services for our customers. That translates into enormous values for them. We have Tech Direct, which enables customers to manage their, their fleet of PCs, regardless of where they are, with supportability, serviceability, manageability, all integrated into one. So it's a software story, technology story, as much as it's a services story. And now with Gen AI, that just changes the game one more level. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, gosh, uh, my company did a research paper kind of chronicling things you were doing in AI, I think five or six years ago. So AI is nothing new to Dell, uh, but with generative AI, we've seen it just, just amplified. It's just a different kind of AI that does more things. Um, so let's do the double click here. Where are you using AI and then generative AI in internally or, or even your, your services that yeah, you're That's a good point. And, and you, you made a very important remark there that we have actually been doing AI. Now we, are, we under the G word there, so gen AI now. But, uh, and before we could do that, we actually digitized all of our processes, right? So services is actually now, as I said, really a technology uh, unit. And the digitized processes, then the AI, really enable us to unlock efficiencies in how we do things and, and then customer value. Uh, but now with Gen AI, how are we doing that? We're really injecting that in a couple of different areas. First, in our offerings themselves, right? So when you buy Pro Support, which comes with the support, so Support Assist now inherently has Gen AI capabilities in there. So we're looking at everything from the product, how it's engineered, we're looking at how we perform in the field, we look at the calls actually coming in, and we look at the ecosystem that the customer has, and that entire set of data is now available for us to very rapidly analyze and provide insights for our customers, which we couldn't do before, right? Before with our AI sort of more a linear flow, right. now it's this multivariable approach at a very, very fast rate, which provides uh, differentiated insights for our customers. And we like to talk about this notion that data has gravity, 
And so because we have engineering data, we our products and how they're designed, we know exactly what's in our customer environment and how it's being used and our th services data. We combine all that to provide then a differentiated set of assets for, for our customers. It's, it's great to see. We're also using for actually agents themselves. So our tech support agents, our field agents, uh, in how they actually execute what's something called next best action. We actually tell our customers yep. um, what they should do in a certain situation. Mm -hmm. But it's really tailored to the specific issue. It's not no longer this notion of, okay, I have a, a script I gotta follow, there's a protocol, I've seen this before, therefore you should do this. It's not that, it's really customized to what's happening in that particular situation, combine all the data assets and then projecting that forward. And we do that, whether it's an interaction on the phone with a customer, whether that is a chat interaction, because as you know, we serve everything from a consumer right. to large enterprise. And so regardless if it's chat, on the phone, or proactive predictive, it all leverages the same intelligence that sits behind the scene now with the power of Gen AI. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting to see kind of how it's proliferating through the organization. And of course, customer zero has become a bit of a, of a, of a talking point throughout our tours, Pat, exactly. you know, that we go on. I mean, look, the companies that are implementing but also building this technology are some of the most important, largest companies in the world. And it's kind of like if you don't drink your own champagne, I almost made the dog food. I said, let's go with champagne. <laughs> Throw that out there. If you don't drink your own champagne. And so when you're a company the size of Dell that has the service architecture, global employee base, that has the amount of products and support required, I mean, if you can't make this work, it, how do you expect people to, you know, feel comfortable buying the technology that you're selling. It's super interesting you said that because actually when we started the journey on, on Gen AI, we actually did it for internal reasons, right? Really get productivity out the door. But it's amazing, and Pat, you and I talked about yeah. this, a number of customers that have actually reached out to us and say, exactly what you said, Dan, how are you doing? So this, this thing yeah. that started as an internal thing has now extrapolated externally because of the number of customer questions coming in. It's like, T tell me more, tell me how, how did you do it? What are the pitfalls that you that you actually encounter? How did you navigate through it? So it became a productivity uh, piece of body of work, but as well as a, enabling very interesting dialogue with our customers on right. how they could approach their own implementation of Gen AI. So Alex, then maybe that would be really useful to everyone out there yeah. is, you know, what are you learning on this journey as you're sort of putting this to work? Because I, I know for sure, I mean, gosh, it was November 22-ish when we saw Generative. And as research analyst firms that we are, you know, I'm looking at all of the content that could be developed, and I still see a ton of the value in who says stuff. But like, yeah. how fast can we go? And I've been asking. It's now over 18 months since that point. Now, how fast can we go? How fast can we go? So, how fast are you going? What are you learning over yeah. these last? And by the way, like we've said a few times on this, it's not just since Gen AI and ChatGPT, but I do think that was sort of the the match and the gasoline and the, you know everything. Yeah, yeah. By the way, I'm impressed you know the exact date. That's, that's pretty cool. Rough. Exactly, <laughs> roughly around there. That's, um, so, so what we see and what we would tell our customers, the, the first thing, and this is, by the way, we experienced this internally, was, okay, where should we focus? Because there's so many use cases for Gen AI. Yes. I mean, it's a sea of opportunity. So we really said, okay, we've got to be very focused on a particular domain that we're going to go after. And then within the domain, what are the exact use cases? So clarity and specificity on what you're going to go after in terms of area as well as the use cases was very important for us. And it allowed us to actually focus the resources instead of being scattered and actually go much faster. Right? And everybody try a little bit of a Gen AI. So I think job, job one is this notion of very focused use cases, clarity and how you're going to derive uh, value is, is fundamental. Uh, the second piece, you, you said it right there, is speed get the use cases honed in and go quickly. Not all of them are gonna perform exactly like you expect, but you can, you can navigate through that at, at speed and you will unlock uh, the value. And, and look, the third piece, which is actually, we talked a little bit about earlier, but it's this notion of the data, right? The data that yes. you have is really where the value is at. So simply uh, making a query to a generic uh, model is not gonna give you a differentiated sort of input. So, tapping into your data in that domain, in the use cases that you specified, that's how you unlock the value. Again, the notion of bringing, we, we, bringing we AI to the data. table stakes. I mean, the, the open LLMs have almost become commoditized inside of 18 months. Not to say for the few companies that built them, but like for us, it's like, oh, am I using exactly. Gemini? Am I using chat? You know, we might compare results, but they've been basically made free and everybody looks at them as no different than another search engine at this point. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm glad you're hitting on data and you, have, you and I have had a lot of conversations uh, on this and the garbage in, garbage out has been 
true for computers since the since they were formed, right? But in generative AI, it seems like it's amplified. It's amplified, exactly. Right? Which, which, which says you can even get like rogue personalities come out and uh, from some massive LLM that hasn't been hasn't been fine tuned, and then you get into this. What generative AI does that machine learning could do, but it was a lot harder, was cross-domain. So for instance, intra-domain like ERP, as an example, or, or customer service, um, it was typically stuff that maybe it wasn't NDA information, but now we're connecting all of these different worlds, and uh, at least the enterprises that, that we've been talking to, their data challenge uh, uh, is, is the biggest. And maybe when it comes to a data, what can you share some things that might make it easier uh, for customers to, to get through this data challenge? Yeah, so look, we, we fundamentally believe you have to first, before you even talk about the data, make sure your processes are really honed in, ideally digitized, because everything runs on the process. Then second to your point, Pat, look, looking at your data and making sure that the data that you're using is spanning the full use cases that you're trying to go after. If I look, reflect right. on services themselves, I could look at just services data and run a model on that. But when I bring the power of the engineering data, mm -hmm. the power of what I'm seeing from the telemetry data coming mm -hmm. in, and I combine that, exactly what you said, this multivariable approach, that unlocks new insights, new value. And the other piece is, how do you actually ask the question, right? So prompting, how do you actually <laughs> prompt the right questions so you actually can get the right results from the data, also equally important. That's great. Well, Alex. I want to thank you so much for joining us here. Uh, it's going to be an exciting few days. It's been great to see all the announcements, all the progress. Congratulations, all of the success. It's, Pat, it's been a pretty, pretty exciting journey over the last 18 months, not only for generative AI, but to watch Dell and Dell Technologies expand so rapidly and excited to watch how services continues to grow and differentiate itself. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. All right, everybody, tune in. We're here for two days at Dell Technologies World 2024 in Las Vegas. Patrick Moore and myself and our expanded team here at the 6.5. We hope you'll tune into all the videos. We hope you'll subscribe and join us for all and everything that we cover here at Dell and beyond. But for this one, we got to say goodbye. See you all later.